Minecraft 1.20 is full of a lot of rare items. Pottery sherds need to be swept up from suspicious sand, and the drop rates of that, not very good. Finding a sniffer egg, getting it to hatch, and then using it to find torch flower and pitcher pod seeds. Uh, yeah, that's pretty rare. Those are rare items. Even something as simple as the piglin head, which is acquired by a charged creeper blowing up next to a piglin, that's hard to get. And I heard Charge Creeper, that's pretty rare. But the rarest item in the newest update to Minecraft has to deal with armor trims. Armor trims that make your armor look awesome by adding extra style plus some extra ingredient to your armor, and then it looks completely different. The armor trims themselves, though, have to be found in the world. It's in the overworld, in the nether, and in the end. Each armor trim has a specific location that it can be found in, which means that some armor trims are rarer than others. And there is one that is by far rarer than any other armor trim. The silence armor trim is the rarest item in Minecraft 1.20. How do you find it? That is what we're gonna be covering today. First, find an ancient city, which we'll talk about. Then find a chest in the ancient city, open it, and then you'll have only a 1.2% chance that that chest will have the correct armor trim in it. To put that in perspective, another rare armor trim happens to also be in the ancient cities. It's the ward armor trim. This armor trim though, has a 5% chance to spawn in a chest. Versus the 1.2? That is close to a four times difference. That's insane. So how do we practically find the silence armor trim? Let's find out. So here we are inside of Minecraft and the first thing we have to do is find an ancient city. And I have some good news. And that is that there is a pretty foolproof method in order to find an ancient city. The first thing that you need to find is this, some type of mountain. Now this is like the snowy slopes and like maybe the iced peaks or something, uh, but find jag peaks, find any mountainous biome that goes really high into the air, and that's where you're gonna start your search. Underneath these biomes, there is a much higher chance that a deep, dark biome will spawn. And we can actually see that with this mountain, we get the deep, dark biome that has all the skulk blocks and the skulk sensors and the shriekers and everything. Ancient cities spawn really close to the bottom of the world, next to bedrock. So you have to go all the way down and then start your search. And I can already see it. I'm in spectator mode, so it's very easy to see. Uh, this is the ancient city. Now, it is not directly below the mountain. So the mountain is uh, over in that area. And then right above us is a forest. But that mountain definitely led to this ancient city. Now, this is not a completely foolproof method. Sometimes you do get unlucky. In this case, this is obviously a mountain. And if we go underneath, we find the deep dark biome, but we do not find an ancient city. So in this case, a player would be pretty unlucky and you'd have to obviously strip mine between all of this, hoping to find an ancient city really close to bedrock. Why level negative 52, if memory serves correctly, uh, that's where you find the ancient city and there just isn't one here even if i use the command to locate structure ancient city it says that the next one is a thousand blocks away so here we got unlucky by the way this method does work in bedrock edition so on tablets or consoles or phones this method also works so here's another mountain we're going underneath we can already see the deep dark biome and i can already see the ancient city under here. So basically find a mountain and have that be the starting point of your search for an ancient city. And then hopefully you'll get lucky and run into an ancient city. Once you're in an ancient city, these are the types of things you're gonna be looking for. And remember right now I'm in bedrock edition, just to show you bedrock, bedrock edition. And all of this data uh, is the same. So the same chances exist across both editions of the game. I kind of like that uh, in the newest version of the game, they do a really, really good job of making sure that both editions are basically exactly the same, especially with new updates. So now I'm just looking through these chests. Uh, it looks like I haven't gotten lucky at all with either the ward armor trim 
or the silence armor trim. I got unlucky in that ancient city and I didn't find a single armor trim. So that was you in that case, you have to find another. By the way, I switched back to Java edition. Okay, so this is the first armor trim I found. It was Ward. I think I've searched through about 12 chests so far. Now, given the stats of only having a chance of 1.2% every time you open a chest, I might have to go through close to 100 chests before I find the correct armor trim. Or I could get lucky and find it in the next one. Who knows? New day, new ancient city. Didn't find the correct armor trim in the second ancient city that I searched. I believe this is my fourth ancient city that I am searching for this armor trim. Uh, I will say that, uh, oh, look, here's another uh, ward armor trim. Uh, I will say that I was recording earlier and I found one on literally the first chest. Like I opened a chest and it was there. And uh, so you never know. Another ward armor trim. Theoretically, I'll find four of these before I find the one I'm looking for. Not exactly how statistics works, but kind of. Ah, the fourth ward that I have found. We did it. Okay. I'm not sure exactly how many chests it took but it was a few we finally have the silence armor trim so now that we have it i want to mention that you can duplicate armor trims so let's duplicate this so that this rare thing becomes actually useful in order to duplicate an armor trim you need the original armor trim plus a matching block Every armor trim requires a different block. I would suggest if you don't have the silence armor trim, you do some research and figure out what the matching block is. For the silence armor trim, it happens to be cobbled deep slate as the matching block. Then you surround that with diamonds. Yes, it requires the same amount of diamonds as it requires to make a pair of pants. So seven diamonds, and that's how you get a duplicate of the armor trim. Then we can do that all again and get another duplicate. We can do it again and get a few more duplicates. And now I have more armor trims than I actually have armor pieces to make with the armor trim. Next, you have to decide what your armor is actually going to look like. And for that, I suggest the tool Minecraft Trim Generator. You can find that at mindtrim.com. So with this, I would suggest probably with the rarest armor trim that exists, you probably want to be putting this on netherite. Remember, in order to upgrade diamond gear to netherite, now you need a smithing template, which is the netherite upgrade smithing template. You find these in Bastion Remnants, and you can duplicate these just like you can the armor trims. So if you want more of them, make sure to duplicate them so that you have enough to upgrade all your armor. Otherwise, you may be out of luck when uh, you use one of them and then it's gone and now you can't duplicate it anymore. So just upgrade all of that. And uh, just to point this out, once I add a trim, so in this case, I'm adding the silence armor trim to a pair of diamond legs and the extra color I'm adding is more diamond. So we're like extra diamonding these legs. Anyway, once I do that, I still can upgrade to netherite. So you don't have to worry about that situation where I'm not quite at netherite yet. I haven't gone through the nether and got all the ancient debris yet. You can still do the trim to your diamond and not worry about the fact that you can upgrade to netherite later. All that being said, we can use the tool to see what our trim will look like. So let's say I haven't upgraded to netherite yet. I'm still a diamond. I do have enough of the silence armor trim, so I'm gonna do all silence. You can individually change these, by the way, if you want to, uh, but let's stick to silence on all of them. And then I can see the color, like what's gonna look cool. Does copper look cool? Does more diamond look cool? And actually it really does. Emerald, gold, gold has a weird like copper color to it. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, that is freaking cool. It looks like I have a six pack of diamonds. Netherite, lapis, and redstone. Redstone, I really like the red. Red and blue. It looks great, but maybe I want to make sure that it's going to look good when I upgrade it to netherite. So I can look through this. Gosh, that uh, quartz 
That looks so sick. So does the diamond netherite situation. Netherite, netherite. <gasps> that is so cool. But anyway, you can use this tool to choose what your character is gonna look like. I like the diamond. Honestly, I like the diamond netherite. That looks cool. And right now, when I'm still in diamond, diamond diamond still looks neat. Now, knowing what my armor is gonna look like, I can make sure, so I already did uh, that. So let's upgrade that to netherite now. We can throw that in. I got my diamond gear. We're gonna have to upgrade these boots. Let's do that. And they're there. Oh my gosh, now we have applied the rarest armor trim. And I really like, and of course, oh my gosh, I really like the color. I'm glad that I used the tool to decide exactly what I wanted it to look like. And now you know everything there is to know about the silence armor trim, how to find it, where to get it, how to upgrade it, the smithing table, everything. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna help me out, you can like, subscribe, comment, all those things that you know that typical YouTubers ask for. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.